super welterweight champion of the world never had any doubt in himself to me it's the knockout of the year handing Sebastian Quindor to the first loss of his career Albuquerque New Mexico you're a proud fight city you need to be very proud stand up and give a round of applause to the new champion Brian Mendoza ladies and gentlemen thank you thank you um, man, it's an honor to be here. Like I said, I wasn't even supposed to make it this far, and I always said the dream wasn't to come this far. It's, you know, to actually accomplish the goal, you know, become a champion, add on the list, you know, to, to New Mexico's short list of champions. You know, I'm now a part of that honor. Igual representando para todos los latinos, esto es para ustedes. Yo soy, mi familia es de Cuba, yo soy de Nuevo México. Yo represento para todos los latinos, tú sabes, para arriba los latinos. And uh, everybody that supports me, you know, uh, I said, you know, the, the Latinos, um, everybody, I just, I just want to make exciting fights, and I hope I did my part in creating enough of a war over here at the at the war grounds, you know, Dignity Health Sports Park. Um, it's an it's an honor, man. Thank you guys. Thank everybody that believes in me. Couple things to unpack before we get to the media. One, you had people are looking for moments here at the war grounds, and I think people will always remember the fact that they were here, they were watching at home, wherever they were around the world, when they saw Brian Mendoza put an end to the night of Sebastian Bundoram. It looked like you were down on the cards as you were entering the seventh round, yet you remained composed and, and really did not waver with your confidence. What was the key to that for you to continue to believe in your game plan when it didn't seem like things were going your way? It's just belief. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, it's literally like uh, you have to kill me to, to get me to stop, you know? And none of those shots, like, even when he was like snapping my head back with those uppercuts, I was never even like a, like a flash, like days or anything like that. So I said, it's okay, you know, I'm going to eat these shots, but I'm going to keep coming. And <clears throat> I feel like I'm a dangerous fighter to the end. I don't even know what round that was. You know, we were just in the, the rhythm of the fight. But um, I, I felt the tide changing, but this is a title fight. And in, in well, title fights, the, the tide can shift back and forth. But the thing is, you know, to believe in yourself, believe in your team. I have a great team behind me. I got Ismael Salas, Lascaia Hernandez, Fernando Diaz, uh, the great Tony Brady, man, the strength and conditioning coach, giving me this gas tank to just keep coming and coming and coming. And... Uh, <clears throat> it's just, it's, it's crazy, man. I'm really here. I don't know what to say. <laughs> all right, I'm going to turn it over to the media with questions for the new champion, Brian Mendoza. By all means, ask the champion your question. Hey, Mendoza, Willy Swaggart, boxeo cubano. Yo no tengo pregunta, man. Solo te quiero decir una cosa. Estoy bien, bien orgulloso de ti, de lo que hiciste hoy y de lo que vas a hacer la zona en tu carrera. Felicidades, man. Un millón de gracias, Willy. Tú has, tú has apoyado desde el principio, desde que me conociste, antes de ni saber que era cubano. Y, 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 lo, y lo hicimos. Aquí, aquí estamos, tú sabes, tú hasta pensabas que era mexicano, pero me apoyaste y seguimos y ahora aquí estamos. Y aquí translate that for us. ¿Cómo era la pregunta? ¿Cómo era? I, I just, I just told him that I don't have, I, I don't really have a question. I, I just, I just wanted to tell him that I am very, very proud of what he did today and he totally deserved it. And I said that uh, even uh, from the day one that I met him, uh, he even thought I was Mexican. You know, he didn't know because I don't have, <laughs> both my parents are from Cuba, but I didn't come out the face. I don't know, I'm from New Mexico, maybe just being born or something in the air, because <laughs> different look, but, um, but he believed in me, you know, even before he spoke South Cubano and even before he knew I was Cuban, he supported. And uh, it's, it's just an honor, man. You know, thank you to everybody that believes in me. There was a whole world full of doubters, but to the few that believed in me, this is for you. Hard work can really get you here. Look at me right now. I was not supposed to be here, and I'm not going to stop grinding. This just added fuel to the fire. I'm going to keep working even harder than I was. I'm a, I don't know how that's possible, but I'm going to find a way. We're going to break these barriers. Brian, right down here in front. Marcus Hayes, Fight Hub TV, powered by Stage Front VIP. First off, congratulations on a scintillating knockout over what probably was conceived as the young boogeyman in the 154-pound division. Uh, I'd like, if you can, Mr. Mendoza, take us back to the moment that you landed the first punch and you kind of saw Sebastian sort of frozen in time. Uh, what was going through your mind at that point? Um, I, have a, I have a habit. I'm used to walk off KO, so you saw my little hesitation and because he started falling and then he just stays. He's that strong, you know, even though he's so lanky, he's still uh, like solid. And uh, he started going down and I, I almost went off, you know, I, I saw the, the shift, but he just started going down and I, I just went with it. And, uh, but as soon as I snapped, you know, that he's still in the air, you got to finish, man, because he's not going to stop uh, just coming forward and everything, even if you let him recover. So I had, I had to empty the gas tank, I empty the tank on him there, empty the clip. <laughs> We've seen time and time again, big punches like the ones that you landed against Fundora uh, stop the fight immediately. What were your emotions? We saw you kind of collapse uh, after the count. Take us back to that moment. Man, like I said, you know, it's, it's the feeling that I wasn't supposed to be here. 
I was not supposed to be here. I wasn't supposed to even make it this far. You know, just a year ago, uh, last March, uh, it's April now, and last March, I was a swing bout after the Sue versus Brashe fight. I, nobody cared that, you know, I was on the car or whatever. I only have video of that, that big knockout because of my friends putting on Instagram Live and some of the fans. And now just a year later, you know, just the nonstop work, you know, get the right team around me. Like I keep saying, you know, East Side Silas, the Brains, Tony Brady, um, and my assistant coaches, this guy, Hernando, this Fernando Diaz. It's a whole team, you know, we're, we're just always going at it, grinding. And uh, I just, I feel like I'm unstoppable. You know, you, you might be able to win a couple rounds and everything, but I'm not going to stop coming at you and uh, emptying that clip. You know, they call me La Bala for a reason. Juan Hernandez, SW5.com, Albuquerque. <coughs> Let me read you this list. Bob Foster, Johnny Tapia, Danny Romero, Austin Trout, Holly Holm, Angelo Leo, Brian Mendoza. <laughs> Bro, it's real, man. Uh, from Mexico, New Mexico, you know, it's, it's a small little town. We're not supposed to get out here. You know, I took the risk. Me and my family up and left, you know, from uh, Albuquerque, went to, uh, to, to Las Vegas. And I, I just knew there was a the next level I needed to take. And you know, I wanted to uh, thank Fidel Maldonado, my original trainer. You know, he got me to 16 and 0 before I even left uh, New Mexico. Um, you know, they, they put that fire in me. You know, from New Mexico, like I always say, I got green chili in my veins. If you're from New Mexico, you know what that means. But <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh, that that fire inside me was always instilled in me. And uh, now, you know, I, I just have to, you know, build the, the other team, the rest of the team that I needed. But we out here, man. Just, I, I just want to thank everybody that's a part of this from, from day one, from the amateurs in New Mexico to now living in Las Vegas, but representing, you know, everybody that believes in me. You didn't pick up this sport until you were 16. You know, thinking about this moment and you go back in time, what would you tell 16-year-old Brian Mendoza? I was actually, uh, before I came out, um, even to, to come to the, the venue, I, I looked in the mirror in my hotel and I said, <laughs> um, look at the little kid, you know. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, the little kid in you, like, you always look up, you're like, yo, I want to be this when I grow up. I'm here. <laughs> I really did it. And he did do it tonight with a seventh round knockout over Sebastian Fundora. Adriana? Brian, congratulations. I'll give you a second to. You I'm sorry, I'm be... deaf. I cannot hear you. <laughs> you can hear me? Oh, there we go. congratulations. Thank Spectacular you so performance. I, I feel that, you know, along, alongside uh, Ringside, many of us kind of saw that knockdown, or knockout, slow motion. Can you talk to me about how you, how you saw that, how, um, how you lived it? I, I saw it just as slow as you did. I was like, is he, is he falling? Is he, is he even hurt? I just thought, you know, he was maybe taking a step back. He takes little, like, angles back sometimes. Um, I, I didn't know it because I wasn't looking for one shot. I know I'm swinging big shots, but I'm a power puncher. Like, you know, what do you want? And uh, I know he, he was touching me a lot, but like I said, you know, I was never hurt. I was never dazed or anything. So I you know, like, let's get it. Uh, Salas actually told me um, in the break, right before that round, he said, um, almost like to earn some respect. He said it in Spanish, but it was like, uh, hit him with some, you know, put some, put some steam on some shots. And uh, it was that, you know, I, I just set it up. I, I, I saw the openings, like I said, you know, before the fight happened, I just saw the openings and, and we rolled with it. You know, you, you see what happens. I just didn't give up. Like I said, it's a, it's a title fight and there's shifts and momentum and I just didn't give up. I never cared, you know, like I'm, I'm losing a couple rounds, but you know, I'm finding my, I'm trying to create the space, trying to find things. It is what it is. I can lose a couple rounds. I don't care. I'm still coming forward. And I need to ask, obviously now as the interim champion, um, you know, everyone kept talking about uh, Fundora fighting Charlo eventually. Well, now you have that title. Talk to me about what you're looking to in your future. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that question. About if you, uh, about your question was with Fedor was being slated to potentially fight Charlo, and now what are his thoughts? So that's the question that she asked. Um, like, I, I, I know I keep repeating myself, but I wasn't supposed to be here, and, and now uh, I have that belt, so they can't deny me. So, first is uh, a year ago, nobody cared who I was, nobody cared what my name was, but I'm, <laughs> I'm here, you can't deny me now, let's get it. And like I said, uh, I'm, I'm the easiest fight to make. They sent me the they called me in 10 days to fight Jason Rosario, a former unified world champion. Took that fight at 160, even a weight class higher. You know, that they wanted him to be comfortable at his weight. I took it. You know, you saw the results on that one. Um, they called me for this one, the boogeyman of the division, that people, it's too awkward. He's too too much pressure and everything. And they thought I would fade. But I, <laughs> I think you saw there's, there's no more fade. Uh, people would rely on that. The time to beat me was back. You know, that old Brian is, is dead and gone. This is a new monster you see in front of you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Steve McGrath, KOR Sports, great. congratulations, Brian. Thank you. Um, looking at the 
Man, I completely forgot what I was going to ask you to be honest. I'm just, your, your emotion, you, you, like, you just seem so excited, man. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm just, congratulations. Uh, man, I really did forget what no, I was like, going to ask you. No, like, you know, I know my, my excitement might throw some people off, but you're supposed to get up here and act cool. You know, all this was supposed to happen, but I know it wasn't supposed to happen. We made this happen. You know, I grinded this out, you know, with my team behind me, um, my people that believe in me. That's why you see me excited. I don't care to try to play this off cool. Like, um, I'm gonna enjoy every minute of this, man, and I'm gonna enjoy the whole ride till the wheels fall off. You guys are gonna see a real person, awesome, cool, like just too cool for whatever. Um, you're gonna see, you know, the full enjoyment, man. I don't care about acting too excited, jumping up and down after I knock someone out. This is the real me, man. Uh, uh, you guys will get to know me now. <laughs> I, I remember, brother. That's awesome, brother. I, I wanted to ask you, what was Ishmael Salah telling you, kind of leading up to the knockout? Because it seemed like, like you said, you were taking some shots, but it wasn't affecting you too much, but, but I kind of saw him yelling from the corner. What, what was he telling you? Um, uh, the first, I don't know how the, the, the rounds were scored. You know, like, I even like lost track of the, the rounds. I even asked, I think, before maybe the last one, I said, what round is it? Because I was trying to keep the momentum, you know, the pace in, in my head. But um, I, I feel, I don't know, I feel like I won some of the early rounds, and then uh, uh, I know he started just getting the volume off. I know he won the, the last couple rounds, but it was just, um, just keep going, you know, Salah stays calm. He, he's a master in, in the corner, you know, he knows how to stay calm and just keep it going. Uh, he would just tell me, hey, that was good, but you did this and this wrong. Um, just, uh, he's, he's catching you off this. You know, he's very, like, just detailed. And, uh, and the, before the last round, he told me, hey, put some heat on those shots, uh, make him respect you know, because I, I almost started matching his pace. And uh, he told me, hey, put some heat on those shots. You know, you're a power puncher. But, uh, and that's literally what I did. You know, I just, I just relaxed my shoulders, uh, got back to my rhythm, let him pop, and you guys saw what happened. He's, he's very good at adjusting and just staying calm and keeping you back in line. Real quick, before we get to Jorge, I want to let the audience know, Time, I don't even know if you know this, the scorecards at the end of six were 60 to 54 on two scorecards in favor of Fundoram. The other one was 59 to 55. So you getting that stoppage was certainly advantageous. Jorge, your question. Yeah, I was gonna ask about the frustration because some of us at, at ringside did have you winning, I think the first round and then losing you know, the next set of five rounds. So that's, that's in line what we were seeing in press row. So what was that thought process for you? Like his reach seemed like it did give you issues you know, for four consecutive rounds. What, were, what was your thought around that? Or maybe it didn't. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, we, uh, we brought in uh, Mike Fox for my main sparring. Uh, he's a 6'4", southpaw welterweight that throws really lanky shots, and he actually has, like, a lot more movement to him. So uh, I was ready for the awkwardness, man. Mike would take all the, tons of angles on me and stuff, but I knew that uh, Fundora wouldn't take as many. And um, so, see, that's what I'm saying. I want to be a pro. I want every round or this or that. I genuinely thought I want, uh, like, maybe the first two, maybe the three. I know like, the shift started changing, but... I gotta watch the tape. Um, you just kind of get lost in the rhythm of it, but I, I don't care. I knew uh, the thing with him was to break him down. He's a monster. He literally does not stop throwing punches, and I wasn't gonna try to just sit there in the middle and trade with him. And you saw when I would do that, he would he would land like sneaky weird shots. Um, so I, I don't care. I'll, I'll give the rounds away. The game plan from the beginning was to win the second half, break the, break the machine down and take him out. Uh, either win, you know, the late uh, half of the fight by decision or take him out late, but I, I was, the intentions were never to really win all the first rounds. It was just, um, just chop him down. You saw I didn't really throw many headshots. Um, it was literally just trying to break him down, break him down. I got to chop that tree. He's, I literally chopped that tree. There's no better way to put it. Brian, congratulations on your win. Um, Thank I think you. that's the candidate for knockout of the year at this moment. Um, but I know you're soaking in uh, the moment, even in the moment, but uh, who would you like to fight next, man? There's Tim Tazuz, Jamar Charlo, there's a 154 Stagman, there's Jesus Ramos, there's, there's, there's a lot of names for you, a lot of big fights, obviously a lot of belts in your division right now. Uh, well, uh, Charlo's undisputed, so that's the obvious answer. And I really don't care, like I, uh, I've repeatedly said, I'm, I'm the easiest fight to make. They called me for Rosario in 10 days notice, at 160, I had to go up for that one. Um, didn't care, because I, the old cliche, you know, stay ready, stay around to get ready. I was training for months and months. Uh, so it doesn't matter. I want Charlo because it's undisputed. So I, I want to obviously go next in line, but you know, whatever it is, you know, the best opportunity. I, uh, I told my, uh, my, my team after the, the last fight that the best opportunity is at 154 or 160. I feel comfortable in both weight classes now. Um, I made the 154 easier than I ever have actually, even after doing 160 in my last fight. But I'm ready for either one. Put me in either weight class. Uh, I feel like it's, it's too late now. I can't be beat. Two more questions for Brian Mendoza before, so we can allow him to enjoy his uh, victory celebration. Congratulations. Uh, so 
my question is, were you as surprised as everybody else, and, and how did you make that happen? Can you take us through the actual knockout? Um, I'm not. I'm not gonna stop coming forward. You know, we train literally for that. You know, uh, like I said, I brought in tough sparring. I didn't bring in punching bags, man. I, I had difficult sparring all through camp. I sparred cruiserweights even like before the fight was official. I was sparring cruiserweights. I was trying to get the size, get the southpaw, get this and that. I, I don't do easy sparring. I don't do easy work. The and that's why you never saw you know a loss like uh, even when I when I know the the even if they gave him the first few rounds too, but those last couple of rounds, whatever I. I don't care. I'm <laughs> I'm gonna keep coming forward. You gotta kill me to get me to stop. So that's why you saw like there was no shake in my in my self belief. It was like oh okay you know you can land some shots, but you really have to take me out because uh, I, you know Sean Rosario hit me with some clean shots. Uh, I, it wasn't even days you know. And now I, I went up against the volume of Fundora. I never really had a problem with it. You know I'm, I'm able to keep digging and you you really gotta take me out to to get me to stop because I'm gonna keep coming forward. How was it like punching up? You know, is that something that you practice as well? Like punching upwards, you know, against. You know, um, that, that's why you saw me. I, I, I'm actually interested in myself to see what the stats were, but I wasn't going for uh, headshots that much. I don't care. And I know uh, some of my best overhands were when, like, he would even duck down. I was trying to, you know, catch where he was going to be instead of uh, like trying to go up there. I don't care what's up there. I can see what's in front of me, and was, there was just tons of body. So I was trying to hit his arms, hit his body, you know, hit, hit whatever I could, you know, just be there and be consistent with it, just not, not give up. All right, final thoughts, Brian, as you go ahead and get the biggest win of your career, handing Sebastian would go to the first loss of his professional career. You become the interim WBC Super Welterweight Champion of the World, a division that's absolutely loaded, and you put yourself among the elite. But, you know, final thoughts as you conclude what was a tremendous night for you. Um, this is for everybody, you know, if you're watching this and you feel like uh, people are giving up on you or whatever, like, it's really possible. <laughs> this is real life, like, I really dug myself out of that hole and uh, I'm now, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the top of the, the, the whole sport, you know, I'm, I'm up here, like, like I said, you know, I wasn't supposed to be, I was down, I hit rock bottom and now I'm at the top, so literally just keep grinding and chasing your dreams, like, anything is legit possible, this is real life, you know, so um, just keep working, you know, to anybody, to just, and thank you to everybody that believed in me when, uh, even if I didn't believe in myself, I kept pushing me. Congratulations to Brian Mendoza, ladies and gentlemen, the new interim WBC Super Welterweight Champion of the World. That'll do it here from Carson. We appreciate it. It was presented by Premier Boxing Champions, promoted by TGB Promotions and Samson Boxing. Congrats to Brian Mendoza. We'll see you all in under two weeks in Las Vegas for Javante Davis, Ryan Garcia on Showtime Pay-Per-View. Congrats to Brian Mendoza.